So we've just left. Oh no, not just left. We've been on the road for hours. We left somewhere. We're going somewhere. Yeah, we just left five hours ago. So <laughs> we're about an hour away from Thunder Bay, and I'm so excited. I'm really excited. Yes, Thunder Bay. We plan on spending um, most of like m the longest period there because there's a lot to do and see. Yep. Yeah, we are going to a fantastic yarn shop. I haven't been there yet, but the store owner is opening this, this store for us, so that's really nice. Um, so I can't wait to do that, and we're gonna interview some fiber artists and some natural dyers as well. And I'm looking forward to going to Old Fort William because there's a long history there with the Northwest Company, including a family connection. Ooh, And nice. we're going to a diamond mine. We're going to an amethyst mine. Well, close, they're stones. <laughs> they're, they're both they're, stones. They're a little different, different in color, but... <laughs> sparkling baubles. Oh my. Yeah, I'm really interested in going to the amethyst mine too. And we're also going to be doing a lot of hiking. A ton yes. of hiking. And we're going to be visiting a sleeping giant. I hope I don't wake him up. <laughs> Sounds... You never know. <laughs> well, I think that if it depends on um, how loud you yell when you're on top of the, the giant. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, this sounds like cliffs and mountains and bridges and who knows what. I, I've, Well, yeah, we'll yeah, see. It's going to be awesome. So That's can't, one word. <laughs> I can't wait to share it with you. So thanks for joining us on our trip. And grab your favorite drink, sit back, and we're going to have a great time. See you soon. See you later. We're at Olives and Bananas Yarn Shop in Thunder Bay, and I'm really excited to go in. I've checked this online, and they've got some fantastic yarns. They've got some fantastic Canadian dyers as well. So come on in, we're gonna go in, and the owner has been nice enough to let us in because the store is closed right now, and so we're gonna take a look. So come on in. Oh, and we'll be practicing social distancing, and we definitely have to wear a mask. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you very much. We're really excited to be here. It's great to have you here. I've, 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 I've <laughs> checked you out online and I checked out the yarn that you have online and it looks amazing. So um, you've got some Canadian dyers as well. So really excited to see your shop. Yes, thank you. It's great to meet you. And, and how long have you had the shop? Um, well, I've had the shop for three years. Um, this is um, the first year where I actually feel like the shop is looking the way I'd imagined it in the yeah. first place. We had construction delays and um, we had a flood last year. Oh gosh. Um, but now the, the shop is finally looking the way I wanted it to and of course we're closed. But um, three it's, years and, and going. It's beautiful. Do you mind taking us on a tour? No, not at all. That's great. So Where do you want to start? Uh, well. What I've been, I what I might do is give you an idea of what I'm doing for the next year while we sure. experience COVID. Yeah. Um, so I've rearranged the store to have um, an enclosed entrance here, which isn't built yet, obviously, but 
Um, there will be a French glass door here and a plexiglass wall so customers can come and visit us here at the front of the store and still be able to see as much as possible. So I've recreated the wool, the wool roving wall in those little glass frames. They'll be there and visible oh, so nice. people can see the colors that are on the back wall and, and place their order through that. Fantastic. Um, I've moved as much of the yarn as I could onto rat rolling racks that I can mm -hmm. spin around and move in front of the, the door for people so they can see colors and see the yarn. Um, and on here we try to keep a lot of the um, hand-dyed yarns, art yarns, and things like that. Um, the Malabrigo cabinet, and there's mm -hmm. Malabrigo sock to the side, and um, all those sort of staple, beautiful, colorful yarns. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, and handy tools and things here at the front. And then stepping this way, we've got um, our sock yarn shelf, which runs back to back mm -hmm. with all kinds of sock yarn. Um, and do you sell a lot of sock yarn? Yes, yeah. we have a lot of sock knitters here. But I think that's that's common just about everywhere because For everybody sure. you know, needs that little easy thing to keep the project to keep in their purse. Um, now over here is the Briggs and Little table. <laughs> That wasn't very graceful. They're alive. <laughs> they are. Um, this is I guarded here by Hazel the Humpback Whale, who's made out of Briggs and Little sock yarn. Um, I love Briggs and Little. Yes, they are. They're fabulous. And uh, so I, I try to carry all kinds of different things. We've got everything from the Dura Sport um, to the Heritage to Tuffy and some of the hand dyed yarns that they're doing now, which are beautiful. Um, and then this wall here, this is um, staple yarns, sweater yarns, um, things like that, uh, baby yarns off to the side. Mm -hmm. It used to be organized all by weight. So yep. you would start with uh, sport and sock down at the end and move your way to chunky bulky at the, this end. Um, but now with the store being primarily online for the next year, I've, I've sort of rearranged a lot by brand, yep. just for my ease of being sure. able to find things. Um, but it still is sort of organized by weight. So Excellent. someday it will return to just weight. <laughs> and are you selling a lot of worsted and Aran weight? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Sweater, sweater knitting and that sort of staple winter. It's what we get here in the north. You know, we've, sure. got, we've got a few months of very cold weather and the rest of the year it's quite beautiful. But those cold months, we tend to hide somewhere cozy with something cozy to knit. Yep. <laughs> Wearing something cozy, but hand knit. Um, and, and and do you notice a change in season? Like do people um, oh, yeah. generally yeah, pick lighter sure. weight during the summer, or do, is it always? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lightweight during the summer. We have uh, we're we're lake life here, so yeah. um, shawls and lightweight throws and things like that. Something something to just throw over your sundress at the end of the day. Sure, that's a pretty common one um, in the summer. And again, socks, just something that's not going to be heavier in your lap <laughs> um, and and yeah I find the, the summer projects um, they they tend to be smaller funner lighter yeah um, people make toys or something anything that's more handheld so um, but we also slow down a bit <laughs> playing gardens and goes oh definitely um, I think that's standard for yeah much. but the tourist traffic sort of changes that here because it's a very touristy town um, and where and do the tourists come from generally? All over. All, all over. across Canada, uh, a lot of Europeans, a lot of Australians, um, and all through the states. Yeah. Um, they come up through Duluth and through Grand Marais um, up here, and a lot of people are doing the circle tour of Lake Superior. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we have all of those. Nice. And they like the local yarn, which is kept over here. There's not a whole lot in right now because I'm leaving that up to the dyers to, um, you know, right now everybody's just taking care of themselves. For sure. So, <laughs> so who, who do we have over here? For so local, local here dyers? we have um, Jennifer Huta. She's Roses and Pearls Fiber Art. Mm -hmm. um, she specializes in, uh, she likes her wool. She knows her, her sheep and her breeds and, and how they work and how they spin. She's a spinner. Um, and she also loves foraging and playing with natural dyes. So she lives out on the Sleeping Giant and she will forage around in her forest lot and, 
and dye beautiful things. So these are, there's rhubarb and wildflowers and cedar and all kinds of interesting things. And then she also she, spins art yarn oh with wow. you know, sorry silks and all yeah. kinds of different things. Yeah, she sounds like she could be my twin. <laughs> I think you guys would get along really, really well. Yes. Aside from all the wonderful work she does here. Yeah, oh. everything else for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's incredible. you guys could talk for a long time, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With your concoction pots. Um, yeah, she's, she's a really interesting um, artist. And then over here we have Maggie Erickson. She's very popular with the locals, and mm -hmm. uh, she has a very popular um, website, Firefly Fiber Arts. So she does um, just really vibrant, gorgeous colors. She loves her earth tones, but she also does some really Fantastic. you know hot stuff. Um, she's got some young sons who often help her too. And oh, great! Um, so one one time her son dyed a, a skein of yarn. It was beautiful. Um, and she weaved it, and I, I don't have it here anymore. I used to have it here, but it was, it was dyed by her five-year-old. <laughs> That's fantastic. So That's yeah, great. she does great stuff and does mini skeins, and they're, they're great. I noticed this. Yes. Which I love. This is fantastic. <laughs> that is. What my, is this all about? Um. Well, I, I was raised by educators, so. I feel like there's, there's a lot to. People are always asking questions, and yes. it's great to be able to, come over here and explain to them why one breed of sheep with, that creates one yarn will feel one way and one will feel another. When people always uh, refer to um, what I call as like real wool, as scratchy wool or anything, something more coarse. But, yeah. um, I, I like to show them sort of the, the history of it, where it comes from. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah, it's so, so great. Different, most of those are from an Ontario farm, Dover Farms. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. familiar with Dover Farms. Yes, yep. <laughs> a lot of those came from her. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's I, great. I bought different fleece, and, and Jen Huta also, she donated a few from her collection there to fantastic. add to that. So I hope to continue to add to it and you know, pop other things in there as I can just to, to that's show. That's great. And they're all unwashed as well, so people can feel the lilin yeah. and, and, and the difference between like the greasy and the dry. And I, I find it, um, as, as a wool shop owner, um, that's that should be one of the priority things for me to learn and know um, so I can help people yeah. buy the right yarn for their project um, I don't think I need to be the best knitter and best you know highly skilled artist of any kind my job here is to be able to make sure that customers go away with the right thing yeah. so and I think this helps oh this for sure anything Absolutely. to help them understand why yeah. wool is the way it is that's fantastic Mm -hmm. What do we have on the other side of the store? All right. Well, this is a huge store as well. <laughs> it is. It's and it's a great it's space. Got a comfy feel to it as well. It does, and it. I'm lucky to have a space that has three big front windows, especially yes. for. And they're also west facing, so I oh, don't have to worry about too much sun yep. in here. But um, it's nice to be able to have um, all that light filtering through here for all the color of the yarn to, yep. to show up and. Show off its beauty. So over here is where um, we have more sort of community sitting, um, where we teach classes and things. This would normally be um, well before it was more tables, but we've downsized the tables, and um, this is where classes and knitters can sit around. Normally, it would be a big bowl with a big bear. Um, and there's more space back here for people to sit and knit. And then this also sort of developed into the children's area where moms oh, okay. or, you know, caretakers would come to shop and kids could sit here. And I used to have a little TV, smart TV, that we were using to be able to search Ravelry and yep. look at patterns and watch YouTube videos. But it was became very convenient to put on Peppa Pig for the kids. <laughs> and they would be happy and yep. mom could shop and everybody yep. was happy at the end of the day. And now kids love to come to the yarn store because yeah, well, I'm sure. there's toys. That's fantastic. And, and a space for them. And there's some people who have joined classes and let, you know have their kids yeah. here. They set them up with their own stuff and their own iPads. And um, so that works really well and it helps for that community space. Yeah. And um, then of course we have the roving wall, which um, was my vision when I first imagined the space was wanting every color of the rainbow and being able to just say, I want one of that and one of that. <laughs> and this is where you can come. So this is 
primarily for the felters. We have sure. a lot of um, needle felters, wet felters, people playing around with felting here. That's um, great. It seems like felting is really coming back. Like, is a, the interest is 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 it growing. Is. growing. I get endless requests for, for needle felting projects and classes and instruction. And it's, I think, probably because it's, it's accessible. It's not something that, um, especially needle felting, every, anybody can do it, kids, yeah. older people, anybody. Um, and wet felting, even though it's a little more involved, it, it also, it's, you could be the best artist in the world, you could have the best plan, and... <laughs> And your result could be yeah. a mystery at the end. So, felting again—it's such a freestyle creation that um, anybody can can tackle it and have some fun with it. So we we carry every all kinds of fibers, everything. Well, there's a lot of merino. I love merino. Yeah. But I carry um, there's Corydale and um, some blends here as well, silk blends, and then there's. Um, more for the spinners up here and some mm -hmm. um, blanks for dyers. There's Gotland and Shetland and things like that, but I, I'm a little low on that right now. So. I've also noticed you've got macrame around here. Do, do you sell? Um, I've had small bits of it in. Um, that was one of the other things I was hoping to bring in more this year. Yep. But um, as I continue, that will, it will be on them on the agenda. I just haven't brought it in right now. Well, there's, so. there's only so many hours in the day. <laughs> there <laughs> is. And with and kids and <laughs> I know. And there's a lot in here. So I find like for a long time, you know, I put, you know, yarn you first. <laughs> yeah. But it's, um, I got a lot of requests from Acrame and there's a lot of good Canadian options out there from Acrame too. Excellent. So I'm trying to buy Canadian as much as possible. Is there any yarn that you want to show us or talk about in particular or point um, out? Give a shout out to. Well, since you're it? you're driving back up over the lake, ha have you popped in to see Natural U? No. Oh, no. Well, we'll have to go over to Natural U, and so this is a mother daughter pair who yeah, I saw they also the do the natural dyeing. Yep. Everything's from their garden. Um, and this is all I have left of theirs right now. Um, but they do beautiful work and they do a lot of videos and podcasts and things. So you yep. can, you know, knit along with them and, and see what kind of projects they're up to. But their yarns, they also seek out eco yarns and Canadian yarns from, um, you know, ethical farms, yes. yep. which is something dear to my heart. I, yep. I try to, at best, shop my shop that way too. So are they out of Muskoka or where are they? Out of? They are Brace Bracebridge. Yeah, Bridge? yeah, Muskoka they, area. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, very nice. That way. Um, yeah, like this is walnut, and um, they have sparkle colors in there. They have just beautiful, beautiful yarns. And fleece artist. Yes, fleece artist. That's a standard around here. It's sort of spread around. I think I've got more on this rack as well. Um, and they use a lot of blue face luster. Yes. And, which is great. Yeah. And the Mineville yarns. There yes. those are a lot of BFL these days too. Yeah. You um, have that over there, don't you? Or? I've got some Mineville over there and some Mineville over here. And are they <laughs> it's from a bit. it's all over the place right now. They're from the East Coast, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They are an affiliate of of uh these yes. artists and, yeah. and maiden. Um so right. and and their yarns I find like I find Mineville is always a little a little bit more fun. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's their more daring, <laughs> daring dyers go over there and try something new. Um, but yeah, fleece artist is it's, it's a favorite here of all the knitters around that's great. here. So, that's great. Um, and they're, they're beautiful sea silk down here. Mm -hmm. And they've got tensile as well, which yeah. I think is an interesting fiber. It is. Um, I like I like how it's grown. I think that as far as ecological and thinking about the future. I think tensile is a good way to go. And you, in terms of your customers, what does that look like? What, what is your, what are the, what's the age range and percentage male versus female? And you know, what the beauty of it is it's all over the board. Yeah. Um, I get kids in here as young as you know five, six years old. We had a six-year-old in, in my chickadee class a couple years oh, ago. Oh, fantastic! Um, sitting around with all the adults. Yeah. And, and she did beautifully. Um, 
is we get kids, and I try to encourage the classes to, to be mixed like that. Um, I think a lot of people ask me about kids' classes, and I think kids learn great when there's adults learning next to them, and yeah. adults learn great when they see how free kids can be. Yeah. So it just, it, they combine really well. So I always say, just open to everybody, and same with the drop-ins. Yeah. Um, and we get all ages. Um, there's a heavy set of, of you know, 30-somethings, 20-somethings, 30-somethings. I'm almost 50, so it's, you know, it, it's nice to see, and it makes me feel kind of hip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, um, and they're, and that's a, a lot of the, the other girls who work here. They're in their, you know, mid, late 30s, and yeah. um, really full of energy and great ideas and, and just that's incredible fun. knitters. <laughs> so it's so fun to be around that kind of energy. And then, you know, of course, we get the older crowd, but... Um, men and women. There's a young man from Grand Mar the Grand Marais area who would travel up here regularly oh, wow. <laughs> for supplies. And um, what are the universities? Do you get? University? Oh yes, lots. I yeah. mean, the university is is p the heart of Thunder Bay, really. Yes. With the number of students, lots of students looking for things, community spaces to hang out in. Yeah. It doesn't cost any anything to come here and knit. Um, you know, people can just hang out and meet people, especially meeting new people. It's, um, That's it's a nice, nice opportunity for people to connect with a project in, in their hands. Yep. They don't have to talk if they don't want to. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. And so, even fly fishermen will come for the, for the, uh, the roving. Oh, and really? this is a big fly. This is a yeah. big fishing area too. Yes. Yep. So, oh, for sure. um, yeah, so those are great for time flies and Oh wow! Or no, he's going to come in a wool shop. Never thought of that. That's that's fantastic. <laughs> and and two, the artists here, we, the art community in Thunder Bay yeah. has always been quite vibrant. And um, Def Sup is just down the street. Definitely Superior Art Gallery. They're about to have their big reopening. And um, the creativity is people make wigs and beards out of that roving and these wild creations. You're giving Jamie some. Ideas. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to come for some of the, the, the drag shows and the fashion shows they do here. Unbelievable with the, the beards and the, yeah. the costumes and the roving and inspired projects. It's just amazing. It's been really hard to not have uh, be able to be here and talking to people. I found yeah. that to be so much a big part of my therapy. Um, you know, I opened this place sort of out of therapy. Yep. And um, and being around creative people and talking about projects all day and um, it's a different kind of retail. You know, sure. we're, we're not, people aren't just coming, oh, I need size of this That's or whatever. Right. It's, you know, we're thinking through things and we're talking about color and and texture and and knitters too tend to often be making something for somebody else yes so there's a lot of generosity that happens within a fiber community and that has been <laughs> stripping that <laughs> without with covid has been really hard oh for sure um i love the people who come in here and it's really hard to be away from them yeah yeah oh i can imagine yeah. well i just want to thank you so much for allowing us to i know you're closed and Thank you so much for letting us come through, well, through this store. It's beautiful. It's really nice. Thank you. You got the display is fantastic, and you really honor the 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 indie dyers here and and the yarn because it's so beautifully displayed. Thank Great you. Job. Thank Great you. Job. And thank you. Thank you. Good morning. It is day six of our road trip, and we are on our way to Sleeping Giant Provincial Park. Now, just so you know, Sleeping Giant, we're going to do a bit of hiking, and it's got one of the highest points in the whole province of Ontario, a thousand, a thousand feet up. Are we going to climb it? No. Yeah, well, we, well. <laughs> there's a lot of other <laughs> points of interest, not quite as high as that. I think that is the most difficult, challenging hike, and we're not quite prepared for that, but there are going to be some beautiful, very high vantage points on some cliffs, regardless. Well, yeah, so then you hope that we don't get lost because there's a lot of trails, a lot of fantastic trails. One of them might lead us up to the to the top of Sleeping Giant. And on the way there, we are also going to stop off at, to see Jen. I didn't tell you that. Who's Jen? Jen just happens to be... <laughs> okay. Jen just happens to be a natural dyer and a, and a fantastic spinner. She's got some great yarn and she works with breed specific sheep as well. So I cannot wait to see that. And aren't we going to go swimming, perhaps? Oh, I, yeah. Did you bring a bathing suit? Who needs a swimsuit? 
<laughs> anyway, have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. <laughs> Good morning. We are. Where are we? We are in uh, just outside of Pass Lake, Ontario. It is beautiful here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And I'm with Jen. Yes. Uh, Roses and pearls. And it's just absolutely stunning around here. It's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So, were your ears burning yesterday? Uh, they were. I was okay. texting Amy. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were, I was talking to Amy and I uh, was looking at your wool and whatnot. And I said we have probably have a lot to talk about today. So yeah, yeah so excited. Fantastic. I don't get to talk wool with people very often, <laughs> especially since the world shut down. So <laughs> this, is, this is really exciting. So why don't we? Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, well, I'm a high school teacher and I'm a mom and I have been interested in, I guess, sort of older crafts since I was a little kid. I yep. always felt that I just kind of lived in the wrong century. Yep. <laughs> I should have been born in a log cabin <laughs> with an open hearth fire and a spinning wheel. Um, and my grandmother taught me how to knit when, she w when I was about five or six. She was very crafty and um, she really encouraged that in yes, me. That's fantastic. So I started as a knitter, but I really wanted to learn how to spin just from looking at picture books when I was a kid. It was something that really interested me. And then I was out at one of the country fairs about 10 years ago and they had the local guild there and they yep. mentioned they were offering lessons and I signed up. And I was living with my sister at the time and I remember mentioning to my brother-in-law, I'm like, I'm going to a spinning class, so I'll see you guys in a couple hours. He's like, oh, I'll come with you. <laughs> I was like, no, it's not that kind of spinning. <laughs> Um, yeah, so from there I, I started just with regular yarns and I thought, oh, those art yarns are so ugly. They're, you know, they're all lumpy. And then about five years later, that's what I, I switched to because they're fun and they're spontaneous. I do yeah. everything sort of unplanned, just intuitive. Um, and so it's really fun to have that creativity. And then last summer, I swear I would never die because I said it was... Well, not never die, but never die with I yarn. I will die before I die. Because <laughs> um, it was just too messy and too much of a hassle. And then a friend of mine um, from Thunder Bay, he's an Indigenous person, and he was dyeing yarns with lichen. And when I saw his, I oh, thought, wow. oh, okay, I have to try this. And it was just a whole rabbit hole. So I started on that. Yep. And then I also swore I would never weave. And then... <laughs> <laughs> And then, well, and partly because I like to do everything intuitively and the whole pattern thing, it just seemed way too complicated. Yeah. And then I heard about the Saori method of weaving, which is out of Japan and it's free, uh, like just freestyle, completely intuitive. You weave from your heart. You don't plan it out. There's no patterns. Uh, if there's an error, it's a design you sure. know, yeah. component. And I was like, this is what I need. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now I, I'm doing it all. <laughs> Fantastic. And, that's, and, and what type of fiber are you using? So I like to use Canadian farm wool. Um, it's kind of half philosophy, half convenience. Yes. Um, I really like to support the farmers because if you don't support the source, then we're not going to have that anymore. And we have some really amazing fiber farms. Um, a lot of this, like my Gotland, all comes from Dover Farm. Yes. Uh, have you been there? I have not been there, okay. but um, I'm very familiar with Dover Farm. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Veronica has, a, I open the bag and I just want to roll in it because it's, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um, so I spin with a lot of her Gotlands and then Lind Haven out of BC, she does Romney's and Wensleydale's. Oh, nice. And she coats them, they live in her kitchen. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so it's not, you know, a big stinky pile of yeah. straw and stuff that you get in the mail like you do with some sort of, uh, some of the sheep. It, they're, they're pristine and uh, so it makes it really a joy to work with and I usually use the long wools because I do yes, the textured spinning I just grab a handful of washed locks and go right from there yep because um, I like the curly cues and uh, some of these like this is commercial cone top I think that's Cheviot but uh, yeah I really like the long wools and the, the texture is is really what gets me. That is gorgeous. So I did this one yesterday because you're like, oh, I like the Gotland. Like, I don't know if I have much Gotland, so I'm gonna grab some. Um, and my kids are really interested in it too. They are more knowledgeable about wool <laughs> than a lot of adults are, and they get really interested in the process. They love weaving with me. My daughter oh, just got great. a loom for her birthday. She's seven and she like works it by herself. Really? Yeah. Oh, so that, which good for impresses her. me because that's, that's you know that's a skill. Um, yeah. But yeah, she's she's really taken to it, and to me, I really like them knowing where clothing comes from. Yes. It doesn't come from Walmart; it comes from 
someone has to make the fiber and dye the fiber, yep. leave the fiber and cut it. Um, so yeah, so it's... And what are you using for dyes? So I use, basically, right now I'm just using what I can gather around here. So this one is marigold. A friend of mine went around to all the uh, gardeners last year and scooped up their marigolds at the end of the season. And these all nice. come from my trees. So this one is lobster mushroom and willow. So that's from that tree right there. And, and do you have a lot of lobster and mushroom around here? Um, on my property, I don't. There's one that grows back in there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but in this area, there's a lot. Yeah. So like when you, if you guys go hiking today, I'm sure you'll probably see some off in the forest. Oh, good. And I don't know if you're into mushrooms or foraging, but they're one of the easy ones to identify if yes. you yeah. want to start with yeah. one. I've, I've died with lobster and mushrooms. Oh, okay. They don't smell great. So yeah. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you forget the dye for a few yes. days. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my kids don't like, I'm Polish, so I love mushrooms. Uh, yeah, it's in my blood. So um, but the kids don't like them, and so when I die with them, they're like, oh, smells. <laughs> um, this is ornamental crab, so that's from that tree over there. And, and you're using the bark from the ornamental crab? I or? use, yeah, the leafy twigs is what okay. I use yeah. for these ones. Uh, so this is the willow again, which is the big tree here. Very the kids nice. call it the whomping willow and apple twigs so that's from my apple tree back there that the bear that we were just talking about yeah half destroyed i'll help you i'll, I'll hold those for you oh sure Thanks. those are very foofy so waiting to get my hands on these <laughs> uh this is lobster and willow again and then the yellows are oh that's nice too tan oh tansy leaf there's a bunch tansy. growing just down here by oh, the yeah. past lake train station we saw and a lot of tansy in in uh, right in the town of Thunder Bay, yes. in the park. There was a lot of it growing. Yes, there is, for sure. Um, oh, and this is tansy as well. And then, oh, I don't have any goldenrod here, but I do have, well, you can see it's growing right over there. So I get lots of goldenrod here. So I like to go, uh, die with that. I did a bunch of warp yarns last year, and then I grew woad this year. So my plan oh, is to try and oh, over dye good. some of it because oh, right now I get a lot you. of yellow because um, yes. that's what I have. So I'm going to try some over dyeing with the woad and then next year I'll grow oh, matter as well. And then that will give yep. me a little bit more of a range yep. in colors. And I think the rest here are white. This one was dyed by the, the shepherdess. So yep. matter usually takes two okay. years. Um, it's usually a two year project. Oh yeah. Can... To get enough roots. Yeah. So that's, uh, I'm going to have to try and figure out how to keep it over winter. Yeah. I might just have to keep snow on it and hope for the best because like I said, it goes down to minus 40 here. Um, average is minus 30, but it, we do hit minus 40 sometimes. So. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's a challenge to grow a lot of, a lot of things, but. And uh, do you have plant, I'm just looking down here to see if you have plantain, you must have plantain. I do, uh, well, there's very tiny ones right here. Yeah. Um, but in the backyard, we definitely have some as well does that, I haven't tried dying with that does that die oh yes oh, oh yeah is it's, it yellow as well it's or nice you... it's got a it depends on the temperature that you okay. have um, you can get to a beautiful golden um, almost almost that color. Oh, okay it's really nice and uh, and then dandelion roots oh yes and, leaves you can, and, and the flowers I have a bag of dandelion flowers in my freezer that I need to die with because I'm freezing stuff out of the garden in case yeah the world shuts down again <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, Hopefully not. I need to get that stuff out of there. <laughs> yeah. So what is this one again? So this one is uh, this one is actually British Gotland. So it's kind of Oops. funny if you want to. That's okay. If you want to feel the difference, our sure. Gotland here is a lot softer. You know what? I've I've noticed the same thing. Mm -hmm. We I um, bought some Gotland. Uh, I've got a lot of local Gotland, but I bought some from um, Sweden. Oh, okay. And um, it was. When I got it, it was oh, coarse. Like it wasn't wasn't yes. nearly as soft. I was I was really surprised, and and Jamie um, didn't even believe it was Gotland. Like it yeah, was. It is. And uh, have you tried the Stansboro Gray? No. So that's the one out of New Zealand that. Um, so I'm gonna let my geek flag fly. Yay! <laughs> so a big <laughs> Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah. And uh, the elven cloaks they wove them out of New Zealand, Gotland, and they had bred them to a point where they could give it its own name so they call them the stansboro grays and they're supposed to be they're kind of like the pickwick cotswold so they are the ultimate yeah um characteristics for the breed kind of thing uh so i ordered some just out of curiosity and this is nice 
it's softer and it's shinier. Yeah, it's and, fantastic. And uh, so it, we have some really, really good fiber here in Canada for sure. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I noticed when we were in the yarn store yesterday, there was a wall, and on the wall it had various breeds of yeah. sheep. Yeah. That was fantastic. So you, you did you put that together, or was it your uh, inspiration? Well, did you inspire it, or uh, maybe I. I I was told of, you, you you were linked to it. Yes, yes. So yes. I provided a lot of the fiber for Amy for that, uh, just from my own stash, yep. because she was interested in doing that. Um, and I had linked her up with Veronica to bring some fleece into her shop, and I think maybe that's kind of her first uh, experience with raw fleece, because yep. she uses a lot of merino for her felting and things. So um, we were doing some wool workshops, and that's when she started to put that together. So I'm, I'm so happy when I was in there and I saw it up because it's been kind of sitting in the it's back fantastic. room for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she just needed some space, and so now she has it up, and, and it looks looks great. And yeah. that's it's such a beautiful shop as it is. So, so what what are people most interested in when they look at your yarn? What are you selling the most of? Or question wise, what do people? What are people asking? It depends on who's looking at it. So I find the weavers, especially the ones making wall hangings, um, they love the texture and they love the curls and um, they are really sort of interested in the sourcing, how I'm using Canadian fibers. If I have just random um, people, like when I do the craft revival um, sales, they come and they ask questions, especially about the dyes or the method of spinning it. Yeah. Um, but they don't quite know what to do with it. It's like, oh, this is really neat, but I don't know what to do with this. Mm -hmm. um, I do knit with it, but I think a lot of knitters look at it and think, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with that. And it doesn't have a lot of stretch, the lock spun uh, yarns. So that is something to consider. But the weavers are really interested in it because um, you don't have to worry about stretch and they can just add little snippets for accents and yeah. things like that. So. I, I think that they look great when you incorporate them in scarves or uh, shawls like it just mm. gives it more it, it makes it more interesting for sure yeah the texture is really what I love and the, the shine um, and if you you know for dyeing like the long wools I think this is English Lester and yeah. it just it shines so much more and it, it emphasizes does. the colors like yeah. it's amazing how much more it picks up the color yeah absolutely gorgeous so right. I guess in terms of um, just educating people on breeds um, do you do any of that or how do you um, I try to do that through my social media yeah and uh, when the yarn shop was able to be fully open to the public we did things like that so I'd go down there with different types of uh, wools we did a like raw fleece to spinning day so I brought it down there and I scoured it so people could kind of yep. see the process and um, they don't quite realize how labor intensive it is especially if you don't have like here I don't want to dump scouring water down my septic, so I have to haul buckets of hot water out and scour it outside and then dump it and then like it's an all day process kind of thing. Yes. Um, and uh, what really surprises most people is even if they're knitters or crocheters or felters, they just think wool is wool. When I start talking about there's different breeds and they actually are significantly different from each other, they're like, oh. I had no idea there were so many kinds of sheep and that they were different and um, so it's really interesting to just kind of get that out there for yeah. for people to know because well it sounds like you're the right person to do that you've got a teaching background and I do like to do it <laughs> and you have a love love of a love of wool as well so it's a great combination but yeah I, f I find that a lot of people they understand they know what merino is because merino has been doing it uh, Australia's been doing a fantastic job yes. on, on marketing merino wool, but it's the other breeds that um, it, I think there's a great opportunity to educate the public. On. For sure, for sure. And uh, breaking some of the myths, like, you know, you can only use this one for rugs and yes. things like that, yeah. um, because they all they all have their purpose and it's how you use them. Like, I wouldn't make a sweater out of lock spun gotland because I would look like a Muppet, but <laughs> <laughs> if I... <laughs> I guess, yeah, it depends on your look. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Maybe <laughs> if I'm boa. going as, you know, Chewbacca <laughs> for Halloween or something. Um, but if I put a snippet in a shawl or a cowl or something, uh, a lot of people buy it uh, as well for making gnomes. Oh, okay. That, that is actually probably making what I gnomes. sell the most lock spun yarn for is uh, people who are making little gnomes and they cut it to make beards for them. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I'd kind of forgotten about that, but that, that probably nine times out of ten, or doll hair. Those okay. um, 
So not sense. two things that I never would have thought to really market to at first, but those yeah. are probably the two things that people purchase them for Fantastic. the most. Yeah. <laughs> so what's next on your list of things to master? Well, I need to try acid dyes. Yep. Uh, I've had them sitting in my basement for about two years now, and it's just like pressure cooking. It's one of those <laughs> things that I'm just afraid to do. Uh, plus I have to do it outside in the summer because things are kind of stinky. I have kids who yes. get in everything. Um, so I have to kind of plan for that. Uh, I've just begun the weaving. I've been taking online the lockdown has actually been great, especially for introverts like me, for learning things. So Esther Rogers out of the States has been doing online Zoom classes. So yep. she's been teaching me um, some more sorry weaving techniques. And because Lily is really into it, that has kind of been my focus. Yeah. And it just pairs so perfectly with the art yarns. Um, and I just, I've never had anything like speak to my soul the way this sorry weaving That's does. Fantastic. So I've been That's really fantastic. excited about it. And I'm hoping to maybe, because uh, I've had the online shop, which can get exhausting sometimes. Yeah. Um, I would really like to kind of switch maybe to more weaving and using my yarns and making some clothing and things. Oh, that's great. Um, so that's fantastic. That's kind of my direction. Um, but I never know, like the pandemic hits and <laughs> yep. you know, things come and go at work. So it's, uh, and with the kids, I kind of have less control over time. So it's bebopping yep. here and there and, and changing course. But um, I always like to be doing something with my hands for sure. Excellent. Where can people find you? Uh, so uh, you can find my shop online at rosesandpearls.ca and it's roses and then the letter N and P-U-R-L-S because I started off as knitting stitch markers. Yes. <laughs> um, and I have an Etsy shop under the same name and I'm on Instagram as well as roses and pearls fiber artisan and I like to post a lot of process there yes. and just sort of our slow living kind of lifestyle to kind of Fantastic. get out there what we're like and I do a lot of sound of shots so if you want to see the inside of the sound of this winter well, absolutely. <laughs> they're PG I promise because I am a teacher <laughs> I have to keep it clean um, but yeah we just uh, that's great yeah. perfect uh, well thank you so much this is great and I love talking wool love talking dyeing and uh, your wool is absolutely beautiful thank you so much it's really nice to converse about it and have people appreciate it. It's very Great. gratifying. Thank you. Lake Superior, and we're on the Sea Lion Trail. Sea Lion Bay? Sea Lion Trail in Sleeping Giant Park. We're on the Sea Lion Beach Trail, and we're almost at Lake Superior, so come along, we'll take a look.
<laughs> fucking fall into the camera. You fall into the camera. Classy. Oh, you have to climb on up yeah, here. I'm about to show you the sea line of Lake Superior, so come along. Isn't it beautiful? It's absolutely stunning. In the 1900s, early 1900s, there was actually a protrusion that came out of the top of the rock formation and it looked like a sea lion. So it was nicknamed the sea lion. And over the years, the erosion, the wind um, has, has basically knocked away a lot of the sediment on the rock. And so it looks like it does today. And eventually over time, it's gonna be a, just a tall standing uh, structure in, in the water. And you can see the big dike in the middle of it. And, and that's going to wear away as well over the, over the years. So, um, so I would advise you to get here before it wears away. But it's beautiful. And the water, take a look at the water too. The water is stunning. It's got a beautiful emerald green color. We're standing on the Canadian Shield right now. And we're about to go and look at uh, Lake Superior. And we're on top of the Sleeping Giant. So come along, we'll take a look. This is beautiful. Oh my <laughs> God. Are you gonna, I can't go there. Are you gonna come, out? <laughs> come on. Oh, oh my. So I'm at a lookout point and it's actually hanging right over the the edge of the the cliff oh my gosh I, I can't do it well you don't have to come all the way oh. this is this is quartz can you that we're standing on and then that is soft shale and then um, talus the talus slope into the water it's beautiful How are we doing? Top of lookout point. What do you think, Jamie? I think it's high and <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> So, just so you know, we're literally about to drive back down this cliff. As Christopher mentioned, we're on the Canadian Shield. Just look beyond the car. There's the cliff. We're on the Canadian Shield, and we're going to be driving right back down this mountainside. So hang on to your hats, folks. Got some more unpacking to do from Thunder Bay. <laughs> Let me put my surprise look on. <laughs> more unpacking. Yeah, and we're gonna start with olives and bananas. Olives and bananas. Who, Wait, lives, who lives at olives and bananas? Amy. 
Amy oh, yes. is super nice. Her store was closed. When I say her store is closed, her, her brick and mortar store was closed for COVID-19, um, but she has an online shop and her store is fantastic. I'm so glad that we were able to go in. Absolutely stunning. I mean, uh, yeah, this, the, the cabinets, the lighting, and, and to, it's so spacious and she's got it sitting there. It's absolutely stunning. Right there. Now you might find this surprising as well, but I love going into yarn shops and imagining I like to think about owning a yarn shop and you know would it look this way would it look that way and I find that when you're in yarn shops they just take on the character of the owner usually and, and you can really feel what the owner is is like as a person and I fell in love with this yarn shop it is so beautiful it's so and nice. she also mentioned that she's hoping to have it open and running to actually physically be able to come to the yep. store she said she was going to set it up like a general store because you have to have the plexiglass. So she's building her husband, I think. She said she's going to build a little area where you come in and she'll bring the product to the front desk, like a general store. Yeah. So she does hope to have that up and running real soon. Yeah. But online, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and one of the things I loved about her shop is that, and you don't notice this right away, but it's painted white. So a lot of the, a lot of the store is painted, pretty much all the store is painted white. And what that does is it really makes the yarn pop. So it shows the yarn beautifully. The lighting's great. She's got great lighting coming in from the street and overhead. It's, it's, it was fantastic. And I love her choice of yarn. It's very well curated. It's, it's really nice. So what do we have? So what do we have? Uh, we've got some yarn. We have, let's start with Firefly Fibers. And I fell in love again in the store with fire, Firefly Fibers uh, from North Bay. Maggie's from, from North Bay and um, her yarn is beautiful. It's really nice. The color saturation, the way she dyed, absolutely beautiful. I, I love this yarn. Can't say enough about it. I love this color combination. It's nice. Do you know what that's called? Humblebee? <laughs> <laughs> Think of a, an artist who has nice. one ear, had one ear, had two ears, dropped one off, and, Starry Night. Vincent Beckel. One of his paintings. Starry uh, Night. I, I thought when you said an artist, I was thinking for some reason. Probably seven? A, a musical artist. Oh, a musical artist. Okay. And then I didn't get it. And, okay. and this one is Ontario Parks. And we've experienced Ontario a lot parks. of parks. A lot of Ontario uh, Parks this trip. And this is really nice, too. And I, I, I get that. I get. I understand why she calls it Ontario Parks. Well... Because of all the colors in it. Absolutely, all the yeah. colors. Because from what we've seen along the whole coastline of Lake Superior are these beautiful, we've seen sunsets, we've seen sunrises, the aqua blues, the green, the emerald, the lichen, the, everything there. Yep, yeah, it's beautiful. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking it too. Beautiful. Uh, Maggie, great job. Uh, really, really nice. Check out, I'll put a link to Maggie's website as well. She's got a lot of great yarn on there. I think she's got um, Yarn of the Month Club as well. So you have to check that out. Okay. The next one is, we're going to go to the East Coast now. East Coast. The mm -hmm. East Coast to Mineville. That's where Mineville wool comes from. And this is a staple of mine and, and many people in Canada. I, I, I just love the blue color. I'm always attracted to blue. I like blue. So, did, did you like blue? <laughs> But I didn't understand. I was so excited when you said the East Coast. I thought we were carrying on with this road trip to the East Coast. No, no, eventually it has to stop. At but some the point. East Coast through yarn fiber. Yeah, it's, 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 that's a nice one. Is there a name for this one? Yeah. Oh, is it? it oh, I didn't. I did a disservice to the yarn. We, we didn't say what it was. We didn't ask you to guess. <laughs> guess, okay, guess. This is BFL. Yes, it's BFL. Because <laughs> I read it. <laughs> yes. And did we say what the, the fiber was on, on, on this? On the bumblebee? On the bumblebee? No, it's Starry Night. Starry Night, yes. Okay, well, you guess what it is, Mr. know it <laughs> Okay, well, this one is Merino. Um, this one is, this one's, this one, uh, this one tricked me because I didn't know when I was touching it uh, at first what it was, um, but it is Merino for sure. And I think there's, well, I read the little label, so I know it's Nyla. I know. And he, he, he only knew once he caressed it because yes. touch alone won't do the trick. That's true. And so, anyway, we're about to leave and thank 
Amy and said, you know, we're about to leave the store. And then she handed us a bag. Each of us a bag. And you actually purchased something else in the store. And I think that's in your bag. And we have not opened these. So I haven't looked at them yet. She did tell us one of the gifts that was in the bag. Yeah. It, so, it was, yeah, you go ahead with it with that. Well, this is special. It's a gingerbread. It's all the gingerbread. gingerbread that she made it and she cuts it with a with a gingerbread cut. Oh, that's cutter. right. Once it's felt, she actually used the gingerbread cutter to cut it. Yeah. It may not be able to see close up, but there's a very dramatic face on that little gingerbread guy. So I have one. Because it was dramatic? <laughs> okay, sure. So what else is in here? Stuff. Stuff. Oh, oh wow. This is that's really nice. Oh wow. It's, got it's a pin cushion. And it's got what do you call this? Embroidered. Yeah. Embroidered scenes from Lake Superior with the, the That's hills, really the mountains, nice. The cliffs and the water. And yours has a few more details to it. That's beautiful. Really nice. And the flowers on the side. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, it's a, is it a pin. corgi? No, it's a little kitty cat. She mentioned it. Oh, right. Cat. It's a kitty cat that's usually the store kitty cat, but store kitty cat's getting a little older, so she mentioned that little kitty cat stays home. But she's. I got distracted. I was looking back as you were talking about this. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I have a short attention span. <laughs> Okay. What else? Um, wool and roving, artisan yarn, natural fiber felting supplies. That's great. So we've got the felting pins and the little um, finger gloves. I guess that's so you don't put your fingers through the leather. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful postcard. Beautiful postcard. I can find that. That's I was looking for a postcard too. That's really nice. And that, you can see right here, it's the sleeping giant. I did. I did. didn't even see it. <laughs> That's really nice. We could actually see that from where we were staying. Right over there. Yeah. yeah. So what else? All right. So let's pull this out. Yes. What is it? Uh, <laughs> There's a story behind this one. Yes. Now, this is the Persian. Felt your own Thunder Bay Persian. And what was the Persian again? A thunder, uh, the Thunder Bay Persian is a, it's like a donut. It's, I think it's a cross between a donut and a, a waffle, cinnamon, kind a cinnamon of. Bun. A cinnamon bun. yeah. Yeah. And, and it has to have raspberry, a raspberry uh, topping to it, which you can see right here. Yeah. And this eventually will turn into a keychain. Oh. Okay. And I was about to buy one in the store. Right. And and she actually gave us this gift. Be a fantastic project. This is definitely. I, I'm definitely going to be doing this. I will try not to eat it as I'm making it. <laughs> and what else? What is? Wow, felting fiber. That's really nice. That's super. Is that really nice? Is that a kit to make something specific? It's, oh, and there's cinnamon in it as well. Oh, this is. Do you remember what this says? She mentioned with the this is to make the felted pumpkin and other little Oh things. that makes sense. That completely and makes I sense. Think there might be a pattern in here or something. Excellent. That's Do great. For that because the yes. cinnamon stick is gonna make the cinnamon stick is gonna be the part of the pumpkin. Pumpkin will be like felted in so it's the cinnamon stick comes to help. Yeah. That is great. Um, and so I would say you know, if you're going to be in Thunder Bay, you have to go to Olives and Bananas because it is a fantastic store. Uh, it's, it's, I love it. I, as I say, I fell in love with that store. It was yeah. absolutely beautiful. And with, and with Amy as well. And Amy is amazing. She was, she was a sweetheart. Absolute sweetheart. It was a delight and a pleasure to meet with her. We had some wonderful conversation and it was more than just conversation. It really did connect. Yeah, yeah. As, as some of the others, uh, the others, uh, 
everyone who's met her says the same thing. She's a lovable, adorable, wonderful, incredible. Um, and they're so happy to have her um, and her shop as a community location where everyone just congregates and yes. yeah. knows one another. And they're missing that so much with what's happening right now. So she she's just beside herself that she misses her people, her firing folk so much that she just can't wait till this to be over and done with so that she can reopen her space and welcome the community once again. Yeah. Community, and you can feel friends, that too. Friends. Yep. It's just there's no words. Yeah, and the way that the shop was laid out, you could just it was, it was a perfect place to congregate and, and hang out. Yes. And and people bring their kids as well. And so it's you know it's really, really nice. Yes. So so thank you Amy so much for thank you, Amy. opening up your, thank your shop. You, Amy. Yes. Thanks a lot. And Thunder Bay was awesome. We, we had a great time. So thank you. Our, our next fiber stop was with Jen. And Jen lives outside of uh, Thunder Bay. And her company name is Ro Rose and Pearls. Uh, and I'll put a link to that as well. And she is a natural dyer and a spinner. And her yarn is fantastic. And I was really, really excited to be able to connect with her. Yeah, she was an absolute sweetheart. And it's interesting because she's she's also a school teacher? Yes, so, which is very obvious. And, and it's wonderful the way she could just carry on a conversation, but in a very specific way, but a very natural sort of explaining and when she's done with what she does. Yeah. It was wonderful. <laughs> she had such a, such a chipper way about her. Oh, it was fantastic. And she, you know, she forges a lot of the stuff a lot of the dye that she uses, um, or the botanicals that she uses, she just forges in her backyard. So yeah, she's an incredible set, setting up in the hills um, with a new back forty. Her new back forty, yes. And and, and her new sauna. And as you'll see, yes, it's absolutely shiny. Yeah. And then with, the, I think you may have picked up a thing or two from Jen. I did. Yes. Okay, let's get going to her yard. She also is, uses a lot of free specific wool. So that was the other excitement on that part. Um, and I picked up a lot of undyed yarn. She does a great job yarning, and I did pick up some some of her dyed stuff. But I also wanted to dye some of her yarn. And then she spun the yarn? She, yeah, she spun the yarn. So she spins it and then she dyes it. Oh. Or she dyes it and then she spins it. So this is Ontario uh, Cotswold Fleece. That is super soft. Isn't that nice? Look at the locks. Well, is that all the natural? The nat that's how it would be naturally done, these locks and yeah. curls. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And the next one is Canadian Wensleydale. What's it called? Canadian Wensleydale. Wensley? Yeah. How does that compare to this? Oh. I can't tell which is softer. They're both equally as soft. They're both nice. And then the next one is... Oh, this is uh, Pickwick Cotswold. Feel that this is beautiful. Oh, that is stunning. I'm saying feel it and I'm holding it. It's like... <laughs> now, what can we have with this that's going to be... Well, we have to think of a color. Yeah. But I think it could just make something really beautiful. special. You're done. Done. Yep. Done it. You done it. Don't have to do anything with it. Just wear it. Thank you, Jim. Oh, okay. You're going to love this one. Okay. You're going to love this one. Close your eyes. Oh, that's kitty cat and rabbit. <laughs> Close. <laughs> it's Ontario um, Gotland. Oh wow, it's really nice. Well, and I, and one of oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, one of the things that Jen does is she works with the, the farmers, and um, who produce the the fiber or the farms, and she uh, sources from various areas. And so she, I know the farm that she works with this one, and it's really nice. That beautiful. Is, that is absolutely beautiful, and I love Gotham, as you know that my last sweater was made with Gotham, but this is even. This almost seems even softer than the Gotham. Yeah. 
we used on my sweater. Beautiful. And this is premium tease water. And this is from the U.S. I think this one's from the U.S. I think so. Mm -hmm. One of from one of the largest um, tea water farms. Again, beautiful and soft. Yeah, that's really nice. Lock sponge. And when you think about sourcing fiber, um, where you're located in Thunder Bay, like when we talk about you know, sourcing fiber, and we think oh, Canadian only or you know, local yarn, they're on the border of Wisconsin. Um, Minneapolis, or Minnesota, and uh, Michigan. So, you know, it's a lot easier to source fiber from the U.S. in some areas than it is from Canada. Right? Oh, it's For, just because, yeah. and, and they're closer than, than southern Ontario. It's just across the border. From, uh, yeah, it's like Grumper Cars, it's just across the border. It's just there. Yeah. yeah, but but Jen does do a, a ton of sourcing from from Canadian farmers. And this is, this is very specific because it says lots fun. So all of these, she does her own natural, like her own hand yeah. spun or hand spinning. But there must be a very specific technique. And as she says here, but that's something you have to look up for yourself because lock spun. So there must be a very specific way to spin this to, to keep all of the natural locks and curls, you would think. Yeah, you know? yeah. I Jen, know. Jen, I think that we're going to probably continue the interview with you. <laughs> We'll have a we'll put our laundry list of questions for you and we'll continue the interview. <laughs> okay, here's some of her dyed yarn. This is um, English Lester Long Wool. I love English Lester Long Wool. And this is dyed with um, tansy and there's tons of tansy around. Tansy leaves. Yeah. That color's stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. Yep. Very good. I could see something with that. I love this would, this would be beautiful with a natural gray, it'd be beautiful with anything, but I love the idea of a yellow with a gray. Yellow is a, one of my favorite colors, yellow these days. And, oh, this is English Lester, and English Lester fleece dyed with lobster and willow, lobster mushroom. And we have, we have lobster mushroom around our cabin as well. And I've dyed with it a couple times. I will tell you though, do not dye with lobster mushroom inside your house because it stinks. So it's better to dye with it outside. Yeah, you thought something died in the kitchen when I was dying with it. She did mention that and she's been doing this outdoors. Um, so that color is amazing. There's a variation of colors in there. But did you push that, oh, it's very, that one in the screen? I did it to the camera, I forgot. It's very caramel like Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's a gorgeous color. Yeah. Very nice. And then I thought I was finished shopping there you were and then you said you would what you wanted a skein and so you wanted this one i don't know how to laugh to say <laughs> no you can do it i like one. it i like <laughs> one thing and i thought hey i think i want that and that is because it's a bulky weight yarn that her mom picked up and um she dyed it with marigold yes and it's such a mustard color that i absolutely love it so i, mean, I plan on I plan on doing really something like that. I'm not sure yet. I have an idea, but we'll see what the end result will be. Yeah. Thank you. Jen, you have a beautiful place, and we absolutely loved it. And your garden was gorgeous, and we had a great time. Oh, we had a wonderful time. Yeah, we yeah. had a wonderful time. Yeah. And if you'll have us, we'll be back <laughs> for sure. And as we mentioned, you're we welcome anytime you might be our way. Drop on by. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.